finally getting an increase of horsepower and torque is what we've been wanting with the all new 2022 Volkswagen Arteon SEL R-Line in the Midstone Gray. The updates in the power push this to the next level. It would normally be going after rivals like your Toyota Avalon and your Mazda six. However, both of those have been discontinued for the year models to come. So I'm going to compare it to what it really should be comparable to the Audi A5, your BMW 4 Series, or your new Mercedes-Benz C300. Standard all-wheel drive is what you're getting with this except for the SE. Quarter mile and zero to 60, it's going to be quicker. The sport back is going to keep more interior space for the rear than the Audi. You're still receiving the luxury and the soft materials, plus you're getting standard adaptive dampers. This is something that is found in BMW, in Mercedes, in Audi, and you're getting that with so much more value, which is going to be the best for you. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. The new Volkswagen Arteon is not going to receive a black optic package because this is not an Audi. But what they are going to do is give you that light bar that's going to go into the Volkswagen badging. You're gonna get the gloss black and the chrome that's going to surround the whole front fascia and it goes into these adaptive LED headlamps, LED daytime runnings. Working down the lower, you're gonna get the gloss black that's going to surround your functional side vent. And I like how it just bulges out the fender, standard 18 inch wheels. These are 19 inch multi-spoke, multi-color alloy wheels. The R-line badging with the gloss black and you get the chrome touch. The side skirts are gonna kick out a bit with the chrome that's going to go all the way into your rear bumper. Now here, this is where I feel that they should have added a diffuser to make it more aggressive because this is the R-line, but they still outline the exhaust with the chrome trimmed even though there's no exhaust there. It's underneath the bumper. And to finish it off for the sport back, the trunk lid spoiler, it's going to be blacked out with the gloss black and your shark fin antenna. So paying attention to detail, Volkswagen is doing that. The best in ground clearance, that's what this is going to be. It is also going to be wider than the BMW 4 Series. So the highlights of this is going to be very sporty and athletic, four wheel independent suspension, the front disc reading at 13.4 inches, the rear at 12.2 inches ventilated. You're going to get a strut front suspension, multi-link rear suspension, XDS cross differential system, DCC multi-mode adaptive chassis control. When you're getting all of these specs and it's not an Audi, this is why I'm saying the value that you're getting, even looking at it from Mercedes or BMW, this is going to be the longest at 191.4 inches. So it gives a happy medium between an A5 and an A6 because the A5 will be shorter, the A6 will be longer, that's why you have more space in the rear than you would on an A5. The wheelbase, however, will be the least at 111.7 inches. The R-line badging definitely makes this stand out, a very similar styling to the Audi. I understand, you're gonna have a difference of drive, but when you're comparing it to the A5, this is gonna have more performance underneath the hood. LED tail lamps is going to be set, and I like that we got the chrome trim on the top part of the bumper so that way we don't scratch the bumper of this sport back when we're going into the cargo it is also going to be the best in cargo space at 19.9 cubic feet because it's a hatchback led cargo lights with a spare tire tucked underneath the rear bench split folds at a 40 20 40 split let's go inside this turbo charge start it up so we can hear that exhaust note The 
The new Volkswagen Arteon is definitely the sporty and most good looking VW that they make. The fact that we now have the power derived underneath it, we're gonna see in the drive how well it is. They back that performance with a 2.0 liter, four cylinder turbocharged, producing 300 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque that's paired to a seven speed DCT dual clutch automatic transmission, achieving 22 to 30 MPGs, a zero to 60 at 4.6 seconds, which is over a second quicker than the prior generation. A quarter mile at 13.3 seconds and this is also over a second quicker with this tuned engine so when you are comparing this to BMW to Audi to Mercedes-Benz this is going to be faster as well plus the value that you're getting that's why I'm saying you got to really think which is the best bargain you're getting a luxury warranty with this you're getting luxury in the interior which you're going to see plus it's the fastest on the numbers with the price point. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Volkswagen Arteon SEL R-Line as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside the 2022 Arteon SEL R-Line, and you're going to receive 37.7 inches of headroom, 41.2 inches of legroom, and this is what I mean by luxury. You're getting leather bucket front seats. This is in the titanium black with 12-way adjustment for the front occupants, memory for the driver, you can option ventilated, you can option massage for the driver, and this is not an Audi. So when I am comparing it to BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, that's why, because you're getting this vehicle in the $40,000 price point, and yet you're getting all these bells and whistles. On the dash, you're going to get the ambient lighting that's going to go throughout, and it also brushes into all of the door panels. It's 30 different light structures that you have. Aluminum inlays with the gloss black underneath the air vents, and it also goes underneath the gauge cluster. So how the design is, it's simple yet tasteful, and it pretty much matches the exterior of the vehicle, and it just brings those highlights in the interior. And the gloss black will brush around your 8-inch infotainment screen. It's touch drive. We have navigation. We have the pinch and we have the gesture with the swipe. When you click onto the menu, you can see all the apps in which we have. Slide it over, click into your Climatron, which is a tri-climate control setting, which is cool. Unfortunately, you can only do everything through the front. Click back into the menu and you can go into your vehicle. Here, you can see your tire pressure monitor, your vehicle status, and so forth. Click back, go into your assistance settings. This is cool because when you click onto the frontal assist, you can activate or deactivate it. And when you do so, that's no longer highlighted. So I do like that it's so much more easier and intuitive than other model vehicles. When you click into your apps, now you can see we have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Miralink, CarNet, Wi-Fi Hotspot, Voice Control, upgraded Harman Kardon with 12 speed Speakers, that's a 700 watt 16 channel Ethernet amplifier. Switch to reverse, you have full trajectory. When you turn the wheel, the lines expand. Click that little icon on the top, put it in to drive. When you do so, you will see that those sensors are activated for the front as well. So you have full safety capabilities. And I'm not trying to sound like a broken record, but a deal compared to BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and even Audi. Slide this open and you'll get your wireless charger which hides my cell phone. So I do like that. And you have the touch sensitive for your air vent system which makes it a lot more advanced. Working down a little more, you're gonna get the leather wrap on the gear shifter, cup holders. You can fit a 16.9 ounce water bottle, I'd say a 32 ounce. You have your auto hold. In an area that you could put your key fob just like the Audis do, and it's right next to your 12 volt. So everything is user friendly and where it should be. Open it up here, you're gonna have two USB-C ports. It's going to be a little bit more firm derived than soft. This is a sporty car and it stresses the elegance. The steering wheel, three spoke, square bottom R-line. You're going to get the gloss black, touch sensitive buttons, the silver outlining it, paddle shifters, the gauge cluster is a full digital gauge cluster. Now you can alter and put the navigation on this screen. However, when you do so, you lose it on the center screen. That's why they option you to go to the Audi line. Going back into it, you could zoom in, you could zoom out, you could do your different driving modes and you could do that through your center touch screen here. You can even go into custom so that way you can alter 
how you want it. If it's more sport derived or more luxurious, you can tailor it the way you like. Door panels are going to be soft for the most part. You're going to get the aluminum. You're going to get that ambient lighting, and you get the cross and you get the contrast stitching. Shut it down for all the windows. It's going to be more firm, but the door pocket is pretty large. I would say at least two or three 16.9 ounce water bottles. You have a moonroof. I like how everything is more wide and yet sleek. So they give a good offset to the design for the front. Very sporty and athletic. Door panels are raised up. Let's see how I look in the back. Back seats, I'm at 37 inches of headroom, 40.2 inches of legroom, which is the best in class comparing to any of those rivals that I'm talking about in the segment that fits this vehicle. It almost puts you into an A6 category, but that one's a little bit longer, so then you would have the length for the sport back. Elbows are gonna be relatively soft in the center. Cup holders, a 20 ounce will be max. You do get two air vents and a 12 volt. The floor is not completely flat. Storage behind both of the front seats. As for the way you sit, you're going to sit maybe a couple inches higher than the front, but because the door panels are raised up, I still feel sporty. It's going to be harder materials on the top. You will get the ambient lighting and you get the silver underneath the speaker. You get the contrast stitching with the leatherette. One touch up and down, it's going to be more firm for your elbows. The door pocket is not the largest, but you can still fit about two 16.9 ounce water bottles. So comparing it to the Benz, to the Beamer, to the Audi, this still has so much more space. Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center, headroom, no issues at all. Legroom, it's not too bad either. I am sharing feet, shoulder, butt space. The seats are pretty wide for the most part. It's going to be a little bit tight, but can it be doable? Yes. You do kind of sit down, not as much as the two sides, but it's not too bad and it is doable when you get into the bins or the bmw it's going to sit up a little bit more firm and you're going to have a lot less leg space so here even though i'm blocking the central air vents i still have a sufficient amount of room and the air still circulates all around and if it's me that's looking for a sport back and i don't really want to break the wallet this is such a bargain while it lasts because sedans are a dying breed and for Volkswagen to put so much effort into the Arteon that makes it a segment above its own class, it's definitely a special treat. Taking the 2022 Volkswagen Arteon SEL R-Line out for our test run, 32 horsepower more giving us 300 horsepower, 37 pound-feet more of torque making it 295 pound-feet of torque. 2.0 liter, four cylinder, turbocharged. It's not a V6, not an inline six, but will it have the power? And that's really what we're going to see when we're comparing it to the rival. So far, just driving it normal, it feels good. I do like it. The dual clutch automatic transmission is definitely going to make it a lot more faster. Zero to 60, about a second and a half quicker than the 2021. So just that little bit of power with a vehicle that weighs nearly 4,500 pounds, that's a lot of an increase that just shows you the dynamics that you're getting for the price point. And the dynamic wise, you stay relatively planted as well. So I do like that road noise. It's not Audi quiet, but you are getting a discount. So you got to take that in consideration. These are not the biggest wheels out there. So it's not too bad. You do sit a little lower. The ground clearance is the best if you're comparing it to Mercedes Benz, BMW, or even Audi. So all that is great. The eight pillars are pushed back. You can see really well. You do sit up a little higher too, I will note. And the brakes, they do a good job with that as well. Turbocharge, you usually want to start at a lower speed or zero, but we're going to give her a go. Is it different from the last model? Yes. Is it substantially different? You're going to feel a difference. I mean, the torque is definitely there and it just has a fun spirit of driving. So I do like what we're working with with that because it just makes it easier. You have the blind spot sensors that are inside on the side view mirror cap. So everything is pretty much easier and accessible for safety functionality and the visibility perspective because of the price point, that's why I'm stressing BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, because you're almost at those numbers, but you're still getting about a five to $10,000 savings, if not more, and that's with almost every single feature. So if you were to get the base of those vehicles, that's really where the price structure comes into play. I mean, look at it.
smooth ride. I do like what we're working with. The sport back is finally alive and it finally has the power that we've been asking for. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is there anything more than that? I'd be buying this RT on. The three things that I like that has to start off with is the increase in power. Is it sufficient for the vehicle? Yes. It actually puts it above class, which is exactly what this particular trim was needing. Last year, whenever we did the review, it was something, it's still playful, but when you're in the six seconds, zero to 60, and you're at a 40 plus thousand dollar price point, you start looking other way. But when you're under five seconds, this is insane because you actually are priced at vehicles that can go into the six figures, and this is faster. So you just gotta really think, what the heck is going on? Why do they make it so more powerful and playful? Because they want you to buy the Arteon. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is that it's not overly long. So when I'm looking into the back, I'm gonna have some blind spots, don't get me wrong, but I'm not at an A6 level, I'm just a hair over an A5 and I have sufficient space in the interior. Turn radius, more or less a stop point, it's gonna get about two lanes. We're going to put it into sport mode, stop in the middle of the road, and we're going to give her some go. And that's what I mean by the speed increase. It is actually so much more fun and dynamic than the prior generation. The last thing that I like, you are getting so much dynamics. You have the adaptive suspension. You can alter the way the driving mode is and that will alter the comfort in the interior. It also al alters the steering wheel. Now it's a little bit tight. When we put it into comfort now, you see how much more loose it is and artificial. So you're getting the same components, more or less, for a fraction of the price. That's awesome. Three things that I dislike has to start off when we're not using the paddle shifters. It's not going to go up to as high of an RPM and it's not going to be as engaged. So they still have to work out some of the tweaks with that. It could be a very simple upgrade into the software. Mode. That way you can see what I mean about why I kind of dislike it. It just, it changes gears a lot more quick and it feels a little bit more jumpy instead of smooth. But that's why you have paddle shifters too. And if you're really wanting to get engaged, use them. The second thing that I dislike, and I complain about it a lot, this is 2022 and I get it, but I don't get it also. Put the navigation in both digital and the center cluster. You have gestures, so you're already given us more than what we asked for. Just throw it over there. You've already increased the power. Just do it so that way I just, I would buy this vehicle. The last thing that I dislike is they don't offer a convertible. When you go to the A5 or an S5, you can option a convertible. The RS5, you cannot. Why can't we get a convertible on this? Because honestly, if that was the case, buy this vehicle today. Now the seat settings are something to get a little used to. At the beginning you're going to feel that you're sitting a lot higher even though everything is raised up around you to keep that sport feel. It just the seat dynamics is going to be extremely different when we're comparing it to Mercedes-Benz, even Audi or BMW because you are sitting up higher. As for the way everything functions. People complain about this touch sensitive stuff, but I have not found any problems at all with it. You may have a learning curve with it only because this is new technology that they implemented last year. It's pretty simple and straightforward though. It really doesn't take rocket science to learn it within a minute or two. The increased power, was it something that made a difference? I mean, it did. And it's more fun to drive at any given gear even in a comfort or eco, you just push or mash the pedal down and you're going to get that fun spirit right out of it. So this is definitely something that for a daily use, for a long term, you're going to enjoy it. You're not going to want to get rid of it within two, three years. In the other model, I would say that could be the case because you don't have that 300 horsepower. Do I sound like a broken record? No because this has more power than a BMW 4 Series or a 430i, a Mercedes C300, the Audi A5, all of those base price are gonna be almost what this is fully loaded. 
the deal that you're getting, the styling that you're getting, the luxury, it is so much of value. I'd like to thank Volkswagen of Newport Richie for giving us this 2022 VW Arteon SEL R-Line for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click the subscribe button. The next video, check out the details, merchandise, website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Ride. It's so much fun. Look, you do a wrap around, you give it some go. The sport back is finally where it should be. I am just so excited that Volkswagen has finally made this vehicle highlight itself and gave it the power that it was missing.